If you understand how a truss rod functions mechanically, then it makes the job of adjusting it a lot more simple. So today I'm going to give you a visual that you can use to understand the different types of truss rods and how to adjust them. I'm Dave with Stringing It Together and let's dive in. So you probably already know that a truss rod is there to straighten out your neck to counteract the tension that your strings are putting on. So Here's a guitar neck before the fingerboard's put on, and you can see the truss rod here. Um, there's different kinds, and I'll get into that in a moment, that's sitting flush underneath the fingerboard. So let's just start with a quick evolution of the truss rod and the different types. So in the very early stages of guitar, the modern guitar production, you'd have just a steel reinforcement bar. So, you know, it's still sitting underneath the fingerboard. This here's the fingerboard, and you'd have a slight curve in it, in a trench so that it counteracts the tension of the strings pulling this way. Now, then around the 1970s, Martin introduced the adjustable truss rod. So in that case, you imagine this bar, you add a thread here, and you have a nut here that you can tighten. And this is sitting by the end of the, the body of the guitar. So you have basically a, a stopper, an anchor point right here. So that's a piece of metal. And when you tighten this up, that makes it curve and therefore putting pressure on the fingerboard. Now that's a single action truss rod and it'll, it's a very simple design. You tighten it, it curves the rod because it's stopped with the anchor here and pushes up on the fingerboard and straightens out the neck. So some guitars will still have a single action truss rod but a lot of modern guitars will use what's called a dual action truss rod or I've heard it called a double action. I'm not actually sure which one is correct. Um, maybe you can let me know in the comments below. But a dual action truss rod has two parts. So it has a lower bar, which is, has a thread at the end, which is attached to a metal block here. And then it has an upper flat bar, which goes on top. So that picture that I showed you at the beginning, that flat bar is what you see. So what we need to do is make this upper bar bend up in order to put that upward pressure on the fingerboard. So to do that with the dual action truss rod, this side is gonna be welded on there and then you're going to have a collar which is welded to here and then there's going to be an allen key a female allen key that slides along this thread so when you tighten the allen key which is the part that's sticking out that then pushes this this way and that is what brings this up since this is attached so this type of truss rod will allow you to counteract the tension of the strings by pulling the neck backward, but it won't fix a back bow if it happens to have a back bow. So the next level and probably the best truss rod that you could put in, in my opinion, is the dual action two-way truss rod. So I'll explain how that's made. So this is gonna look very similar at a, at a quick glance, but it's actually, it functions slightly differently. So instead of having this loose, like able to come off and this is the part that's moving this is actually welded to this bar so this allen, female allen key is welded to this bar and this is a left hand thread and inside here you also have a thread which is a right hand thread now that might be confusing um, but it'll make sense in a moment so so just remember from here to here is one piece and there's a thread that goes into here okay and then on the top bar, you have a, a female nut right here that's welded on. So when this goes on to here, what's happening is that you turn this and that slides this along the thread. And since it's attached to here, that curves. So since it's a left-handed thread, it's going this way and don't worry if that doesn't make sense the whole left right hand thread kind of you have to wrap your mind around it a little bit but all you need to know is that if you turn it to the right it makes this shape counteracting the tension of the strings now the key thing for this truss rod the dual action two-way truss rod is that it can go both ways so when you turn it the other way it releases the tension on the flexible bar and if you keep turning it that way to the left then it can do the opposite. So if there's a back bow and you want to get rid of the back bow, then you can put tension the other way by 
flexing this. Now hopefully that makes sense. So if you tighten it, then you're fixing the forward bow from the, the normal one from the strings. And if you loosen it, you can fix a back bow. So to me, this is the most efficient truss rod. Um, there can be some arguments as to the advantages of a single action truss rod. One being that you're not actually having to route out a big enough, a bigger cavity. So this one takes up a larger trench inside the guitar. So therefore you're taking off wood, arguably re reducing tonal qualities. Um, I'd have to see the Pepsi challenge for that one. So hopefully that made sense. Give me a thumbs up if it did. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And if you're struggling with anything else in your guitar, like frets that are popped up and causing some issues, you want to get that perfect playability, that perfect feel, then I'd highly recommend going down to the description below and clicking on the link, put in your email, and it'll give you access to my free course called Foolproof Fret Work. And that'll teach you how to assess your frets, seat them properly, level and crown them. And uh, yeah, I think that's all for now. Hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you next week.